The level of thirsty exhibited by these men tonight. Ugh. I have no words for it. Hey guys, it's B and welcome back to my channel. The fact that it's Casa More Time, Casa Me Ago, a Casa Me Ago, my PTSD is flaring up from last season. Oh my God, let's just get into the episode. So the show starts off with Kira and Will. They're happy, they're in love. Nothing new. Now we move on to Shannon and Josh and they're still having the same issues from week one. Shannon's having trust issues. Josh expresses that if new people come into the house, they both should give the new people a chance and be open to that idea. And Shannon was not really trying to hear it. I believe it's because Shannon gave up the kitty cat. So now she's like, ooh, like it's over. Like I kind of just want you. The vibe that I get from Josh and Shannon, it's like, you know, in high school when it's like the, the jock and the popular girl, and just because that the way society is, they date. And it's like, they date just because they're aesthetically pleasing and that's because it's supposed to happen. But then you see their relationship on the outside, it looks like it's all picture perfect, but in the inside it's toxic as hell. That's the vibe that I get from Shannon and Josh. Next scene where Trina's in shambles still and Will is comforting Trina. Trina's having these emotional issues that she experienced from her last relationship and she's bringing it on into this with Cinco. Her trust issues are flaring up. And it's like, Shannon, Trina, you guys have like trust issues with men and you're in this Love Island environment. It's like a catch 22, ladies. I don't know what to tell you. This is like the wrong environment for trust issues. Shannon is starting to show two faces. Shannon goes to Trina and tells Trina that Cache told her that Cinco pulled her for a chat. And then in the next scene, Shannon's asking Cache and Olivia, why was Trina crying last night? It's like, Shannon, come on. Cinco has to make a decision soon because honestly, I feel like I'm in the love triangle now. It's, it's taking an emotional toll on me. Cinco gets a text and the boys are having a day out. And it's because they won the Love Island Battle of the Sexes game. During the bros day out, Cinco lets it be known that he's, he wants cash. He was much more happier with her and vibrant. So I knew this was going to come. I kept saying that he'll be back. Like you cannot trade an honest, genuine connection with just lust. All they had was a physical and sexual attraction they didn't have an emotional mental connection do i feel bad for trina as a woman yes but also no because of the way she went about shit if jeremy never dumped her she would have never gone for cinco so like i said you lose them how you get them while the boys are away olivia gets a text that all the ladies are leaving to go to casa amor I loved how the girls left little mementos for the guy. Kira left a cute little message on Will's mirror. She left Laquita loves Will. I don't know what Laquita means, but it sounds nice. And no, I'm not gonna Google it. Cache left her headband and some lingerie in Cinco's closet. Look at Cache applying pressure. And then Shannon left some lingerie in Josh's closet. Okay, ladies, mark your territory. I'm going to discuss the girls' villa experience first, and then we'll move on to the guys. So let's focus on the ladies first. We meet five new singles. This is the only thing I like about Casa Moore. I have to learn 10 people's names. It's a lot. Gabe. Gabe wants Shannon. I love that for her. Raul. He's 24 from Miami. He wants cash. I love that for her. Cam is adorable. Cam actually replaced Bolo. I don't know if you guys heard about this whole thing that went down with Bolo. I heard that he was replaced 
One, because he wasn't 21 yet. Then another rumor was he was posting inappropriate things that he wanted to do with the girls at the villa on TikTok. At first, I was kind of upset. I was kind of like, why wouldn't they just replace him with Jabani? That would have been fun little twist. And you know, like a good redemption story. But by watching Cam during the show, I like Cam. So Cam wants Kira. I love that for her. Andrew, 29. He's interested in Shannon. Charlie, he's 30. I love the fact that he's older. And he owns his own trucking company and he wants cash. I love that for her. We see Shannon and Gabe talk and I kind of like that connection. I feel like with Josh, he's, like what she said, he's too immature. It, he looks like he'll stress her out too much in a relationship. But Gabe, I feel like he'll give Shannon what she wants. But for Shannon, he's the type of guy that she wouldn't have to worry about. Like she could let him go out to the club and be stress free. With Josh, I feel like she'll be at home stressed out. We also see Shannon chat with Andrew. It was like, it was all right, it was fine. The ironic part about this whole thing is Shannon literally just told Josh that she kind of doesn't want his head to turn and look at little Miss Shannon turning her head two ways. This is why you can never say never in Love Island. With these new guys, I saw a different side of the OG girls. Trina was chatting it up. I had, I had never seen her chat with Cinco this much. Kira talking about wine preferences. I've never seen Kira chat so much. Now let's move on to Olivia. Olivia and Cam are chatting. The fact that Olivia said that she feels pursued and desired. Like what the fuck was Giovanni chopped liver? Like the way Giovanni was showing affection and how attentive he was towards Olivia, that's rare. She met Cam like one hour, like a few hours ago and, and she's talking all this talk. Olivia doesn't know what she wants. And the fact that she, and she also said that it feels good to be pursued. I didn't really see Cam pursuing her. I don't know, maybe they edited differently, but I, I just saw them having that conversation. If, if that's what she thinks pursuing is, then I don't know what the fuck she thought Giovanni was doing towards her. Cam and Kira's chat. Did you guys feel a little spark? This is why time is of the essence in the villa. I feel as if, if, if Cam was there earlier, I feel like he would have swept Kira off her feet. Cam and Kira, Cam and Kira, it just rolls off the tongue. It's just the fact that Kira's so infatuated with Will, it's gonna be hard to pull her away from him. Kira having a whole meltdown with missing Will. It's giving me, this whole Kira and Will situation is giving me Johnny and Sally. When we all thought Johnny was gonna be good to Sally and he obviously wasn't. Ugh. Kira is, let's just, Kira's not gonna recuperate well. So Charlie and Cash, I'm totally feeling that. I am feeling them all ready. I, I'm just, I'm just loving the fact that Cash has options. And we learned something else about Cash. Charlie asks Cash about wanting children, and when she, she was hesitant and like taking her time dancing around the question, I was kind of confused. Like, girl, what's wrong? Let's spit it out. Don't, do you not want kids? And she opens up about she may have difficulties having children, and the fact that Charlie was chill about it and it helped her in a way because she's never had that chat before with anyone raul and cash i did like their conversation they did the bachata together it's sad because i do zumba like five days a week and i still can't bachata for shit oh my god cache charlie and cinco i hope that love triangle happens because i want cinco's head to be spinning the way he had cache and trina's head spinning let's talk about these casa amor girls Okay, we meet the Casa Amor girls, and usually I'm a girl's girl, but I am not really feeling these girls at all. Genevieve, she's 22, she comes off extremely immature. We learned that she's best friends with Shannon's little sister, and she wants Josh. She says she has the three Bs, beauty, brains, and boobies. She's, I'm not feeling her. Leslie, the girl with the purple hair, she's 24. She seems like a rebel to me. She's chill. 
She said that she used to be an exotic dancer. She gives me fun vibes. Like, I'm all right with her. Isabel, the 21-year-old that wants Corey, she's trying way too hard. And I feel like she wants Corey because she sees how hard of a time Corey has had in the villa. She's trying... I feel like she's like throwing herself at Corey. Like she's forcing it. I don't see it. I don't see them two together. She She's trying way too hard for me. Okay, she's 24. She was cute. She wants Cinco. I like the fact that she's assertive and she knows what she wants, but if she wants Cinco, she's wasting her time. Flo, she's 26. I like Flo's energy. She's chill. She's calm. But as soon as the Costume World girls enter the villa you know they do a little tour the fact that they wiped off kira's message to will on the mirror it was isabel that physically wiped it off the 21 year old tacky that's tacky as fuck i understand you guys are here for this you're here for that but at the end of the day it's like what what was the purpose of that like that was so whack to me that was who does that and then if some of y'all do stay, y'all are gonna have to live with these girls too. So why why start off on that kind of no foot? And the boys finally came back from their boys day and the girls are going all crazy, like screaming, Gene Genevieve, like, oh my God, I'm like, I was, I'm like, I'm looking around like trying to see is, is Beyonce behind them? Cause I don't understand the, 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 let me relax because I don't want to sound like I'm a hater. I just I was just confused by all of that energy. And the way that these boys were acting, they were acting like they've never seen vagina before. Listen, happy birthday, Corey. I know we all want Corey to find a connection. I know we all want Corey to find love. But Corey, Corey was a different level of thirsty tonight. Corey, the way he was gassing this whole situation up, this boy really said these girls look like they were scientifically made, like they're from another continent. And then Will saying these girls are stunning. Honestly, like what are the OG girls? Like what was Amy? Were these girls gremlins or something? And the girls were getting ready in the girls dressing room and how they were like, and how they were analyzing everyone's relationships and Kira and Will aren't that strong. Shannon and Josh this, Shannon and Josh that. Y'all walked in five minutes ago. Like, calm down and relax. You guys are talking all this shit while you're sitting at their freaking makeup and hair stands. Like, calm down. And the fact that they think Jeremy is some type of piece of work. Like, girls, please. I can't. Like, their energy is on a thousand. Corey presented a question to the guys. If, it, like, if they weren't with their girls, like, who's the top girl on their list? <laughs> messy, messy, messy. Miss Cinco said Leslie. Jeremy and Josh both said Genevieve and Flo. Will said Leslie and Flo. <laughs> I really gotta take a closer look at Flo's body because these guys were going crazy about her body. Cinco mentioned her body. I think Corey mentioned her body. Josh mentioned her body. I didn't see anything. Maybe I gotta stare at it harder. All I saw was Genevieve's boobs. This is how you know I'm not a perv. I wasn't staring at her body like that. I just love the fact that the boys recognized um, Kira left a message on the mirror. That was sweet. That was a sweet little moment. I'm happy that they saw that. Corey and Isabel have a chat. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling her. I feel like she's trying way too hard. She's like, oh, I'm sleeping with you tonight. I don't see it. She's just trying to stay in the villa. I feel like she saw that Corey's having a hard time. She's not it. I'm not shipping it. She can go. And plus, she wiped off Kira's message to Will. That was so. Uh, I'm still not over that. Leslie and Cinco have a combo. Not invested. I don't see it. Cinco also had a chat with Kay, and Kay let it be known that she's not gonna be a second option. She's top dog. I'm not even gonna invest in it because those two are not gonna go anywhere either. Jeremy and his next victim, Genevieve. Her name is Genevieve, but I'm going to call her Genevieve because I like the way Corey pronounced it. It's safe to say Genevieve is Jeremy's next victim. I'm not investing in it because Jeremy is all over the place. If you don't know what Jeremy's type is, 
He had Trina, Amy, and Florita. They're all three different girls. But it's safe to say that Jeremy's not missing Florita anymore. Oh my God, Will's chat with Flo. Kira, <laughs> Kira, if, if Kira believes in God, Kira better get on her knees and talk to the Lord because I felt a spark between Flo and Will. I'm kind of invested in it. And I feel bad for saying it. I'm getting Sally and Johnny PTSD. Josh is trying it with Flo. It's not gonna happen, so. Let's not even waste our time talking about that. At the end of the night, both the OG girls and the OG guys, everyone, everywhere are playing the Tower of Truth. Ugh. I hate these kind of games. Yo, the producers or whoever it is, they're so messy. They're like, you know what, skip combos. Straight to, straight to, straight to lust. Straight to kissing. Straight to drama. Isabel's up first. She picks up block and it says kiss any boy Islander and she goes straight for Corey. She's she's coming off way too strong. And you know, usually I like assertiveness, but she knows that I feel like she knows that Corey's in a vulnerable state, so she's like, Yeah, let me pounce on that. Josh picks up block, he has to kiss the hottest islander like it's his last night on earth. He chooses flow. Flo got to pick any islander of her choosing and kiss them upside down. She picked Will. Womp womp, Josh. Over at the ladies' villa of the OGs. Cash got to pick any islander and kiss them upside down for 30 seconds. Cash chooses Charlie. Cash, Charlie. I love the sound of that. And Bay, Bay. Charlie has a long tongue. Shannon had to perform a 20 second lap dance. She chooses Gabe. I'm loving seeing this side of the OG girls. Kira had to kiss the top three Islanders and she chose Cam, Andrew, and Raul. But she kisses them all on the cheek. She's respectful. She's respecting her relationship with Will. Little does she know, Will is over. Will is over there. Will is over there swallowing tongue. And she's over here being like loyal to him. This is giving Johnny and Mercedes. <sighs> My predictions so far, Shannon, I don't see Shannon leaving Josh, even though I know outside the villa they wouldn't really work. I just don't see her leaving she's Josh. definitely gonna bring back Charlie. Cachet's not in a real couple, so. And they're like vibing really hard right now. Olivia, I don't see Olivia connecting with anyone really. Mm, I feel like maybe she should connect with Andrew, the 29 year old, just because he's older, but that's really my only reason. Trina, Trina better try to find a connection real hard because Cinco don't want that ass no more. So she better open up and find someone. Kira, I'ma pray for her. When it comes to the boys, Will, I don't know. I don't see him leaving Kira. I feel like he, yeah, he might have his fun with Flo, but unless Flo pulls out all the magic in her box of magic, I don't see Will leaving Kira. Cinco, I don't see Cinco with any of these girls to be honest, but I don't see him going back to Trina, so maybe he just might stay single and maybe Trina might come back single. They might seem like they'll be in a couple, but he'll end things with her. Josh, I don't see Josh leaving Shannon. He's trying really hard right now with making a connection. Like you see, he went hard with Flo, but I don't see him leaving Shannon because I don't think Flo wants him. She wants Will. Jeremy, by force, is definitely gonna bring someone because Jeremy's Jeremy. And Corey, definitely by force, is gonna find a connection. I mean, if Corey doesn't pick one of these girls here, he's going home. But I don't see any of these girls for him. Hmm. Who would I couple him up with? I would couple him up with, with K. Corey and K. I want that to happen. K and Corey. Let me put that in the universe. This is the part of Love Island where I dread the most. 
I can't wait till Tuesday night's episode so I can get freaking messy. Tonight's episode was really PG. I wanted, I thought it was gonna be a little more dirtier. I guess it's fine. We met the five new Casa More guys. We met the five new Casa More girls. I'm feeling the guys. Not really feeling the girls. Hopefully they make a better second impression. And let's see if Cachet is gonna still want Cinco at the end of this. We forgot about that. Oh my God, this is getting fucking good. All right, you guys, as always, it's a pleasure. I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Enjoy your night. Bye.